evening and welcome to the Cindy Lavin Show. My guest tonight is South Shore singer-songwriter Fred Meltzer. So thank you so much for being here tonight, Fred. It's thanks a pleasure. For ha- thanks for having me. <laughs> now, you are, like myself, a native New Yorker, mm-hmm. and, uh, but you, you didn't stay there very long, right? You were no, I was born in, uh, in New Rochelle in Westchester, and I stayed there for a year, and uh, I said to my folks, I'm leaving at that point, and they followed me to Texas. And so we were there, and then we were back around in Virginia, but spent most of my uh, childhood in Plymouth and uh, was happy to come back here after 25 years of uh, college and post-college and other reasons that ultimately weren't good enough to, uh, <laughs> to stay down south. So That's happy true. to be back. Now, you started uh, playing the piano when you were nine years old, and you were also writing songs at that point? Uh, I was probably 15 when I wrote my first song, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a song about overuse of credit cards called Plastic Money. It was a blues. <laughs> it was taken after a uh, big trip to Chicago where all I saw was credit cards coming out. <laughs> and I said, well, what happens then? <laughs> and uh, so that was my, my very first song was called so, Plastic Money. So the urge for social commentary was already <laughs> expressing itself in your, your songwriting. <laughs> now when you were what, 11 you began drumming? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I um, started playing uh, drums when I was 11 and after a couple of years of lessons I remember asking, uh, uh, my mom came to me and said, do you want to go and study uh, with John Corrigan? Uh, John Corrigan was a big uh, drum teacher here on the South Shore. I'm not sure if he's here anymore, but um, and he was very well respected. And I'd had two years of drum lessons, so of course I thought I knew most of what there was to know about drumming. And uh, so I remember saying to her, "Well, why don't you sign me up for the summer? Because I could use a little refining." <laughs> and of course, it was a tremendous summer, and I learned all kinds of Latin beats, and I learned how to play with a band at that point, and. You know, it really propelled me, you know, way more than I evidently was ready to give it credit for. Now, you were also at the uh, South Shore Conservatory uh, Jazz Band, is that right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, spent a summer there um, playing drums. I played with a big band, which was really tremendous because when when you're playing drums in a big band uh, and you stop, 17 people turn around and look at you. (laughs) It's a tremendous feeling. And uh, I also was able to work uh, with a percussion ensemble which did amazing things. We had our own show in addition to backing up the brass ensemble and these parts for percussion that were written back in the 15 and 1600s for these classical pieces, I remember reading one part that was printed out on the sheet of paper. It said, take a uh, cast iron frying pan of a certain weight (laughs) and fill it up with a quarter inch of water and take a wooden spoon and hit the, the pan from below with the spoon and go like this. And it makes a sound that goes <laughs> And that's the sound that they needed for that part of the percussion ensemble. It was amazing. Wow. And, uh, so it was really terrific to be able to do those things. Yeah. Oh, now you studied at uh, Brandeis. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was your major there? Was it music? I was an economics major. Wow. Um, I was not a music major, um, but I played music more than <laughs> I studied economics, I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, uh, I had two bands when I was there. Mm-hmm. The first one was called Guilt Without Sex, mm-hmm. and the second one was called No Don't Stop. <laughs> and we were able to play some originals during those times. and. We were on college radio and we played parties and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, then after graduation, my keyboard player and I moved to New York. Mm-hmm. And uh, we stayed in Scarsdale, your hometown, <laughs> uh, for a few months and also kidnapped our lead singer from a shack on the beach on, in uh, California mm-hmm. and drove across country in three and a half days with mm-hmm. all of his stuff packed in this little Dodge Omni, I remember. <laughs> Uh, once we got back there, we started playing, and things went pretty well. Um, and then I had to make a decision. The band was given an offer to go play top 40 in the Poconos, and I said, that's not really for me. So instead, I got married. <laughs> wow. Now, subsequent to that, you wound up down south, mm-hmm. and you were in a band with three litigation attorneys. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Of all things. <laughs> my, my ex-wife was at Emory Law School, and I was at the business school at the time. And uh, so 
I was at a party with her and some of the people that she was going to school with. Mm -hmm. And she introduced me to some people and we were fooling around playing some guitar mm -hmm. and uh, the bass player said to me, you know, he said, well, you know, you're, you're a pretty good guitarist. And I said, well, actually, really, I'm a drummer. And he goes, you're a drummer. And all three of them turned around and said, you're a drummer? <laughs> we need a drummer for our band. I said, really? And so we started um, rehearsing in my garage. I had another Great Dane at the time. I know that we had talked before the show about my Great Dane, Sadie. Mm -hmm. uh, my first Great Dane, her name was Cola. She was a 140-pound runt of her litter <laughs> who loved coming into the garage. She would sit in front of the bass player and just look up at him with adoring eyes. Aww. She was a real rock and roll dog. And we were playing these ridiculous <laughs> songs by Cracker and Green Day, and the, and the, which isn't such a big deal. It was the mid-90s. That's not such a big deal, aside from the fact of who we were playing them for. We would, because of the connections of these three litigation attorneys, we would be playing law school formals, and we would be playing um, intern gatherings where the partners and the interns are supposed to sort of get together and clink glasses and, you know, say, oh, we're looking forward to having you on board, that sort of thing. And what they really needed was a jazz trio in the corner right. at a country club. Right. And what they got was us. <laughs> and, of course, the, um, the interns loved us. The partners were plastered against the wall. <laughs> they, they didn't know what to make of this whole thing. So we, uh, but, but they kept paying us to come out and do these <laughs> things. So we did, and we had some fun with that. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's really exciting. Now, uh, now at one point, I, I have to ask you this. I understand that you, uh, you met Oscar the Grouch, and you met Big Bird from Sesame Street. I don't know, I don't think I, I know anybody else who could say that. Oh, well, really? What were they like? Is Big Bird really that big? He's big. <laughs> Big Bird is big, and uh, on roller skates, I got to tell you, he's even bigger. <laughs> um, what, what happened was I was playing percussion with the Plymouth Philharmonic when I was in high school, and I did a season with them, and we probably did two or three concerts of standard classical fare, but at the end, they had a Sesame Street theme night, and we had to learn I Love Trash and the Sesame Street theme. And, <laughs> You know, can you tell me how to get how to get to Sesame Street? And I grew up on all that stuff. I was a huge Muppet fan. I was so excited that they were coming, and it was my favorite show that we did. Um, I got something autographed for my then girlfriend at the time. You know, from Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a great time. That's really neat. Now, um, you're also involved in uh, nonprofit work, mm -hmm. and uh, the charity that you've chosen to highlight in this evening's show is something called um, Potentials Unlimited? Mm -hmm. Yes. Potentials Unlimited is a tremendous group uh, based out of Plymouth. Uh, Sandy Stride and Keith James run it, and they uh, also have a radio show on WATD um, out of Marshfield. But the main impetus and, and what they do is helping kids out who have certain challenges and disabilities through music and dance and I get to be part of the house band that where Keith has in particular has written some tremendous uplifting originals um, related to changes that people go through in waking up in certain ways there's one called not just sleeping and they're, they're tremendous songs you know, songs about resolving conflict, songs mm -hmm. about not fitting in, and so on and so forth. Um, and we play these songs, and the kids sing, and they dance, and Sandy leads them in dancing. Uh, we've got what's called a Twilight Showcase this coming Sunday, the 24th of June, uh, which may or may not you know, be uh, relevant. <laughs> but uh, once a month, they put together, uh, it's been at the place, a place called the China Gourmet down in Manomet. And from 3 to 6 in the afternoon on a Sunday, we fill the place up, which they ordinarily would not fill. Mm -hmm. And we play the songs. Um, another member of the band is a blind uh, gentleman with Asperger's mm -hmm. who has studied at Berkeley. And he's a tremendous piano player, and he does all of the different keyboard effects and so forth. You know, th there's a kind of a two-step song that we play. Um, called Two Hour Shower. <laughs> I take a two hour shower in the morning. And uh, so he'll, he'll go ahead and he'll play 
the banjo part, you know, make it sound like Deliverance. Oh, wow. And uh, it, he's, he's a tremendous musician and a producer as well. Oh, and that's... so it's, it's really a, a great, great opportunity to uh, help, help out these kids and to be able to play music. So I play drums and they let me play a few of my originals at the shows too, so it's fun. That's fantastic. And uh, we're going to be flashing the contact information for mm -hmm. Potentials Unlimited right here on your screen. So at home, you can take a look at that and <laughs> get in touch with Please them. Please do. It's a very worthwhile organization. And as for yourself, if people would like to get more of you, uh, where can they find you on the web? I am at music.fredmeltzer.com. Mm -hmm. And there you'll find the schedule of shows, which includes my own shows uh, playing solo. Mm -hmm. as well as uh, the, a crazy band, Ivans. the Crazy Ivans, <laughs> which is a cover band that plays all over the South Shore. And it is really a fun, high quality ex experience like that. So that's a lot of fun. So you see all those shows up there, um, many through between now and the end of the year. Um, but as well, you'll find about 30 originals. Um, and if you like them, let me know. Wonderful. Well, in just a moment, we're going to get a chance to hear some of your originals and uh, pretty excited. Good stuff. Fred Meltzer, South Shore singer-songwriter, will be